Hey there boys and girls, my name is Kyle, better known in these parts as Blendcraft, and today we're going to be making a tutorial on creating a game ready asset in Blender. Now to do this, we're going to be following my standard workflow. We'll start with ideation, and then we'll continue to creation, unwrap, texture, normal map, and then we'll bake on the ambient occlusion. Then once we're ready, we'll export from Blender and bring it into Unity. Then it's just a matter of setting up our material. Sounds easy, right? Yeah, I think so too. If you're interested in skipping ahead to a specific part of the video, click on the on-screen annotations now. If at any point you realize that you don't give a shit about what I'm talking about, feel free to skip ahead, the time codes are in the description below. Alright, we're going to start by talking about a solo and team oriented workflow. On a team, you could have someone that creates concept sketches and then passes those sketches onto a 3D artist who models the objects and then passes the objects onto the artist who unwraps and then creates a diffuse and speculative emission and occlusion in normal maps, who then passes those files onto a person who's in charge of creating the material within the engine but only if the project needs specific shaders and then the environmental artist creates the, well, you know, the environment, and then finally your code monkey programs the object to do whatever it's supposed to do. Sounds messy, right? Yeah, it can be. Luckily, we're a bunch of low-level scrubs and we don't have friends, so uh, we don't have to pass files around as much. So let's talk about a solo workflow. My standard workflow is usually just creating some type of digital sketch, and since I suck at art, it usually looks like a toddler drew it. Then I model it, unwrap it, create a diffuse, a normal, and an ambient occlusion map. Then I bring everything into Unity, save it as a prefab, and I'll work on it later. Now that we know what we need to do and what order to do it in, let's just get started. We'll start in Blender with a new scene. I have a custom scene set up with no default objects, so if you have that basic bitch cube, delete that shit. Once you're done and your scene's barren, slap that space key and type in the word circle. Then select the mesh circle option. If your tools menu isn't already available, hit the T key, then change vertices to 16. Next we'll switch into edit mode with the tab key, then E to extrude, and press Z to move only on the Z axis. And then we'll need to type 0.1. Once we have that, We'll extrude again, but this time we'll move 0.9 units. Then we'll extrude again, move it 0.1, extrude 1.2, and extrude 0.1 again. Then we'll extrude 0.9, and then 0.1 again. Now, before we move on, we need to flip the normals. To do this, select everything with A, and then in the shading slash UVs tab, we'll click recalculate. Now we'll select our smaller sections. To do this, we'll switch to face select mode and select a face to start with. We then need to rotate around the object, selecting new faces while holding the control key. Once everything is selected, we'll extrude it, but we don't want to really extrude it. We want to scale it, so we'll press S. And we don't want to scale it on that Z axis, so we'll press Shift Z to restrict our scale to the X and Y axes. And then we'll scale it to 1.05. Next, we'll set the top and bottom of our barrel. To do this, we'll need to switch to edge select mode and while holding Alt, select one of the edges. Then, while holding Shift-Alt, we'll select the other three edges. Then we'll extrude it, switch to Scale, restrict Z, and scale to 0.95. While you're still in Edge Select, we'll select the top and the bottom of our loop and press F to create a face. Then we'll select the side and press F to create all the other faces. If yours isn't creating the faces for you, well, this sucks to be you, you have to do it the hard way. Once the top is finished, grab one of the bottom loops and press F to create a face across the top. If it doesn't automatically create a face, then you have to do it manually. Do not create one face across the entire top. This will create what's called an ingon. Our polygon should never have more than four connecting vertices. For animation, you shouldn't have less than four, meaning you shouldn't have any triangles. With game asset creation, since it's imported, all the faces are converted to triangles anyways, so we can make triangles all we want. Now, we're going to do the same to the bottom. Since we have to go inside the barrel to create the face on the bottom, we might as well delete the extra faces we created when we scaled them originally. For the final touch, we need to add two caps. To do this, just left click on the top of your barrel and create a new circle. Change the vertices to 8, switch to vertex select mode, and scale your circle down. Extrude it on the Z and cap it off with F. Don't forget to recalculate your normals. Now we need to duplicate it. To do this, just press Shift and D, but before you move it, restrict the Z axis. Once it's in place, you can scale it down. When scaling, you should also restrict the Z axis. Once you're happy, we can begin our unwrap. We start and unwrap by making seams. To do this, we need to switch to edge select mode and start selecting the edge loops. And then we mark them as seams by hitting Ctrl E and then selecting mark seams. Once we create all the horizontal seams, we need to create some vertical seams down the front of our object. Don't forget the seam on the inside of the barrel lip. Next, we'll open a new window so we can see our unwrap. To unwrap, select everything with A and then press U and select unwrap. To make this unwrap more efficient, we're going to overlap some UVs since they'll have the same texture anyways. In face select mode, select the top and bottom caps, switch to orthographic which is 5 on the numpad, and then top view, which is 7 on the numpad. If you don't have a numpad, I I can't really help you. I, I honestly don't know how you don't have a numpad. My Dell notebook from back when Dell wasn't a shitty company has a numpad, and that was like a decade ago. Did you like specifically look for a keyboard without a numpad? Because I honestly, I don't understand. I, I, you're on your own. You're on your own kid. Anyways, slap that U key again, but this time select project from view, and then in your unwrap, hit G and move that bitch far away. We'll position it later. 
then we need to select all the circles since they're all going to be the same color. Again, make sure you're in orthographic view and on the top, and then project from view. Then move them away. Next, we'll mark our scenes for our caps, unwrap them, select it, and move it away. Now that we have everything ready, we can start positioning. Select everything and press Ctrl A. This will average the island sizes. To save more space, I will manually overlap some of the UVs. To make sure everything's perfect, I'm going to turn on Snap and switch its mode to Vertex Snap. Once everything is positioned, we can export the UVs by going to UVs menu and then selecting Export UV Layout. I'll save mine to the desktop. Then we'll be opening in Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, uh, just buy a copy. It's like $6. It's worth it, trust me. Now we'll pick our colors for the diffuse map and paint them in. I want a symbol on my barrel, so I created one in another tab. I'm just going to copy and paste it in here and scale it down. To make this, all I did was Google Vector Art Fire, and I traced one of those images. I want mine to be placed right in the middle of the barrel. Then we're going to save our texture back to the desktop as a PNG. Now, for the normal map, I'll create a new layer under my symbol, and then merge the two layers. With that new layer selected, I'm going to add filter, and under the 3D section, select Generate Normal Map. I'm going to switch my object to texture map so I can see it better. For detail scale, I'll set it to 10. And for the settings, I want low to be 100, medium to be 0, and high should be about 50. Then we slap that OK button and save our normal map. Back in Blender, we need to open up a barrel's texture. To apply it, we'll switch to a material tab and create a new barrel material. If your material tab looks a little bit different than mine, you're probably not in Cycles Render. So up at the top, switch over. For the color, we don't really want color, we want our image. So on the dot, click on it and change it to image texture. Then in the drop down, you should select our texture. If our texture isn't there, just click open and find it on the desktop. If your symbol is upside down, just flip the UV on the X axis 180 degrees. Now, we'll create our ambient occlusion map. To do this, all we need to do is create a new image. I'll call mine AO underscore barrel. Next, we need to switch over to the node editor. Once there, select the image texture node and switch the image to our AO texture. In the world settings tab, make sure ambient occlusion is checked. Then in the render tab, we need to turn up the samples. I usually keep mine about 512. Under performance, we want the X and Y to be 256. This is because we'll be rendering off our GPU instead of our CPU. Basically, we're using our graphics card to do all the work because they're really, really good at rendering stuff. It's what they do. At the top, you want to select GPU Compute for your device. If you don't have that option, press Control alt u and under the Systems tab, switch your compute device. Mine is OpenCL because I have an AMD graphics card. If you have an NVIDIA card, you should see CUDA there. Once you select that, you should be able to use your GPU. If you don't have a graphics card or your card is so old it doesn't have any CUDA cores or OpenCL support, just render with your CPU, but make sure your number for the X and Y values are 8. CPUs love small numbers. However, it doesn't seem to help that much, it's still going to take a while. You know, I bet you're the same person who won't buy Photoshop, aren't you? Alright, once you're ready to bake, scroll down to the bake section. For the type, select ambient occlusion, the basic margin is fine, and click bake. Now we wait. You know, if you're like me, you, you probably positioned yourself inches away from your monitor and you're just staring at your screen waiting for it to finish. It'll be any day now. Then when you're done, you'll have your AO map. Switch back to the UV image editor and save your map to your desktop. Back in the material tab, we're gonna want to remove our texture. Then in the object tab, we should rename our object as barrel. Now we're ready to export. You wanna go to File, Export, FBX, select Mesh, navigate to our desktop, and slap that export button. Now we need to import into Unity. To save time, I'll just drop the files into my project's assets folder. It's faster than importing them each one at a time. Finally, we'll create a new empty game object, name it Barrel, reset its transform, and drop in our Barrel Mesh. Then manually set its position to 000. There should be a materials folder. In there, there should be a no name material. Rename it to mat underscore barrel. And then back in our assets folder, we need to apply our maps. Our UV map goes in the top one. The AO map goes in the occlusion spot. And the normal map goes in, well, the, the normal map spot. It'll tell you that the normal map isn't actually a normal map, so just tell Unity to fix it for you. If you add a plane, you might notice the light is shining through your model. Just select the directional light and set the normal bias to zero. If your texture looks a little blurry or pixelated, you might need to go into the texture setting and override your max sizes. There you go. You now have a finished game asset and it's looking sexy as fuck. Alright, that's it for me. My name's Kyle and you just learned something cool today. See you next time.